Okay, so welcome everybody to the June Wave 5 Trade web monthly webinar. Uh, just briefly before we continue, the course that I delivered in live in May uh, in Chicago, I've now put together on the Wave 5 Trade membership site. Um, the course has five modules. We talk about the, the core Wave 5 Trade trading strategy. Uh, we look at futures day trading strategy, stochastic trading strategy for all time frames. And in there, there's three different types of strategies that we look at. Uh, we look, we've got a multiple time frame trading strategy uh, module and blend investing all trading the fifth wave and using the Elliott wave indicator suite there. So really, really uh, good course. Uh, we're going to be having extra videos on there for every module with further examples. So, but it is available right now. W5T elite training course. Uh, if you hit subscribe on the scanners um, membership area, you will be able to see the W5T elite trading course there for $197. Great value. Again, it's going to be an evolving course in that we've got the core uh, modules there. We're going to add extra evidence and examples and then just throughout the whole sort of wave five trade history as we go forward, when we, uh, we trade some of those particular sorts of strategies, we'll be putting more and more evidence in there for those and examples. So let's get on with today. So Trevor, blend investing is all about looking for those growth stocks and buying on the pullbacks using the uh, Wave 5 Trade Elliott Wave ind Indicator Suite. So it's, it's, a, it's a strategy that I use with my inner circle uh, and that inner circle since the beginning of this year when we launched our own blend portfolio. I think that's around about 186% growth so far this year. If you, I, I, I did the figures today, Victor Jerry, uh, sent you the spreadsheet because you're in my inner circle. The blend investing uh, portfolio, we have I think it's about 186% growth uh, since the beginning of the year. We've got 24 ETFs and, and stocks in there. And, we, and, and basically I'm teaching how to use that particular strategy in that core module there. Okay. Hang on, I've got a couple of questions. Okay, Isaac, how can I use Wave 5 Trade to trade options? Okay, so Isaac, um, Wave 5 Trade gives you the, are you going to trade options with, with, with stocks? Um, obviously, there's lots of different options strategies. What Wave 5 Trade does is gives you the indication that there's a fifth wave um, ready to trade. Uh, we talk about entry strategies, uh, stop losses, target levels with the target zone and all that sort of thing. Um, so what, what, what happens is if you're on a daily time frame, for example, uh, and you're trading the fifth wave and you're looking for a, a good entry, uh, you get, it gets to a certain price and we'll do an example in a minute. Um, and let's, let's pull one up now. Let's use that as an example and uh, let's go for uh, and use the Ninja Trader version because this is the futures and we will go through that in a little while. Uh, but what I want to do first is I'll just bring up. Okay, let me bring over the Ninja Trader version, get some stocks on there. Um, so QEP, for example. So with QEP, this is on the daily time frame. Isaac, it's a stock, and we're looking for it for it to go long. Okay, it's just broken the 535 today, so not brilliant, uh, but we're still got a good trade on there. So we're basically saying on this particular stock, when it gets to 1213, for example, when we move outside the six ball moving average, we need to be looking for a long. Okay, say 12. 1218, something like that. I can't remember exactly what I put on the video there. Um, but our stop loss is just below the wave four. Okay. Now, when you're trading options on a daily time frame, you are looking for anywhere between nine and 25 days for it to hit the target up here 
on the fifth wave. Now, just lately though, guys, just lately, it can be taken up to 30 days. Yes, so, sorry, it's, it's in a QA. and a um, If you wave your wand on the screen that's being shared, guys, there's a chat box. Open up the chat box, click on all panelists and attendees, okay? So everybody can see your question, because if I don't see it, somebody else can answer it. Some of those that are more, um, you know, like my inner circle, like Jerry or whatever, it, they can uh, maybe answer your questions as well. So for, for options trades, you're talking between nine and 25 days to hit target. So once it gets over $12, you've got to look for an options strategy that will give you um, the price. We've got a target price here, say 25 days of 1450. So you're looking for an options play um, that runs out in 25 days uh, and we're looking for a $14.50 price. Now there's lots of different um, types of options out there. And you know, Jerry um, is one of those that does use options. Uh, so, you know, what Wave 5 Trade does is gives you the opportunity to spot that fifth wave move, which is the highest probability move in a trend, okay? So in QEP, for example, on the daily time frame, we're looking to go long around about $12.13. So once it gets to that price, you can be confident to look for that that option strategy that gets you to $14.50 in 25 to 30 days. Does that answer your question? Now, I can't tell you which option strategy you're going to use because there are loads of them, okay? Uh, but, you know, I'm sure Jerry will say that uh, keeping it simple with, with the options for calls or puts uh, is probably the best way to go. But what Wave 5 Trade does is gives you a target price. It gives you a price once it moves through that it's good to go, uh, good to trigger for that fifth wave move. And you would, you know, you would look at least 25 days in the future. Now, if it's on a 60 minute time frame, you're looking for 25 candles in the future, 25 hours, trading hours. Uh, if it's on a weekly time frame, 25 weeks. Okay, cool. Okay, let me just... Get rid of those. Okay, so Fernando, let's bring the trade station over. Now, you know, I'm no expert on all of these different platforms. The, my analysis commentary is up here, okay? So if I just put in um, that same ticker again, QEP, on um, TradeStation, okay? Now, obviously you can move the chart along and everything like that, but once I've got my analysis commentary op clicked open, I click on that low there, okay? Just off screen on my other screen, I get the analysis commentary chart box up, okay? So then I close that and I can move the chart around and the wave count stays where it is, the uh, pullback zones stay where they are, and the obviously the target zone uh, goes on there. Okay, so what, when we are looking to isolate that wave count, we are looking, this pullback, let's just walk through this here, guys, okay, when we're isolating. If you isolate back here, We've come back too deep on these, okay? This has broken this wave too, okay? So this is the start of the trend. And also look, all the time, when you're looking to isolate, no matter what time frame you're on, when you're looking for a low, it has, it has to be in the oversold zone to start that trend, okay? Okay, it's coming from the oversold zone. So that's where we isolate that wave because that is the move that's the current trend that we're in on the daily time frame and we've pulled back against that trend so that's what we're interested in we're not interested in this roller coaster move now this roller coaster move 
that's in the stochastic training strategy. There is a strategy to trade this roller coaster overbought, so or oversold to overbought to oversold to overbought to oversold. That is within the strategy in the um, elite training course there. So does that make sense, uh, Fernando? We can do some more examples, but what you're looking for is oversold and the start of this current trend. This isn't, this isn't the start of the current trend because we've pulled back too deep here. Thank you, Jerry, for, for that on the options. So anybody want me to look at anything else on TradeStation while I've got it open, uh, whether it's a, a, a mainly stock or, or Forex? I don't have data for futures on this. I don't have data on every single platform. Nobody? Come on, speak now, speak now. Okay, let me move this off. So basically they all operate pretty much the same. It's just the buttons that we click to isolate the wave count depends on how, we, how my developer can code it and what's available to use in each particular platform. So that's the only real difference between the platforms. All the code and the rules and everything's the same. That's right, Fernando. If you've got a really, really awful looking, uh, I, shall I pick one at random now? Um, let's pick a ticker at random. Um, I'll probably get it wrong, GCI. We'll probably pick a good looking one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's quite difficult on some instruments. So what I do is if we zoom out a bit here. Um, so yeah, I sorry, I just have to get used to the controls again uh, with a different one. So what we've got here on GCI on the daily, okay? We zoom out a long way. We can see we've come from these highs. We've had this double bottom here, but all this is correction. It's not a trend, okay? It's not a trend. All of this is not a trend. It's coming down and up and down and up. It's going nowhere. This was a trend, okay? So if we zoom in here, where did that trend start? most likely around here, but it was still in this rangey period here, okay? So all I've done is gone back to find the first bit of trend where we are, where it is, okay? So all of this is range bound period, then we get the big move up. So that's my start of my um, pretty recent trend. And then look what it does, okay? It gives you the rest of the trend. So we've got the bullish trend up, the bearish trend down, and this is where we are right now, okay? This is where we are right now on um, GCI. Now, this is on the um, Wave 5 Trade Stock Signals membership. This was on the spreadsheet for today, GCI. So again, all I've done there is gone back and isolated the wave count at, at the sensible point where that first bit of trend was, and then we had a bearish trend which hit target, really streaky. And then we're in this short term trend now. Yes, uh, William, the course has um, day trading futures strategy in there. It has day uh, in the stochastics, we have the day trading futures and day trading uh, stocks and Forex in there. Okay. So a lot smaller time frames. Um, all I'm doing is just showing you isolation here. We're going to go on smaller time frames in a little bit anyway. Um, so as you can see, GCI at the moment, really, really steep pullback here, but has found support in that red zone. It just needs to move up um, to, you know, let's zoom in a little bit and look at a potential entry strategy here. Again, we need to remind ourselves of this entry strategy and what we have to help us, the six floor moving average high here, no matter what time frame, is your starting point for entry strategy. Okay, 
So then uh, bear with me, I use this one very often, horizontal line. Um, so what we're looking for is we need to be outside the 6-4 moving average high, say for tomorrow's bar position, uh, which is about there. Okay. Uh, we're above all of these highs and for tomorrow's bar position, we're outside of the 6-4 moving average high. So that would be our entry around about, um, bear with me a minute, let me just put the stop loss on and then I'll do there. Stop loss, again, this is only a cheap stock, okay? So you only need to be about two cents below that wave four. Let me just change that to red. So again, this came from the stock signals membership. Um, we've, we've isolated the bar count. We can see the previous two trends, the one bullish, one bearish. We've come very deep on this one, um, but we're still good with the 535. So let's do this properly. Let's set it up. And then we're going to go on and do some shorter time frames. So as you can see, 535 is good. Stochastic's good. We just need to um, put in a fib extension here. So we're going to go that. Remember, highest point on the wave three to the zero. And then back to the highest point on the wave three there. And as you can see, we have the 535 pulling back between the 1940. Okay, so this is live, so this is going up. Um, but what we're looking for is this support level to hold on this pullback. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a stock, whether it's a Forex, or whether it's on a five minute time frame or a daily time frame, it acts in the same sort of way. Okay. This wave falls pulled back against the main trend. We're looking for that support level into one of our probability zones. 75% probability it's gonna go on and make a new wave five high. Around about $12, probably a little bit higher, but this is our zone for the, for the probability there. So we are waiting now for this price to push through here, okay? To push through whether that's 1075 or whatever it is, okay? We're looking for outside of that 6-4 moving average. When we get a close outside that 6-4 average, moving average high and it goes through there, we've got to look for that entry. So for me, it's easier if I trade physical stocks or CFDs, I can put that order on and fire and forget, okay? There will be a replay of this webinar. It's being recorded, Isaac. Yeah, it'll be in the members area. So again, if you're trading options as well, you want to wait for the, the price to close uh, through the 6-4 moving average high and say, right, okay, this is my uh, entry. If it goes through this price, I'm going to get that option strategy and I'm going to go along. My target price is $12.10 and it should take around about 25 days, okay? Uh, and it should be as simple as that. Don't make it complicated. This is not a complicated strategy. And I know sometimes it gets a bit overwhelming. This is why we have these monthly webinars. This is why I've produced an elite, the elite training course uh, to help you guys, okay? And I'm not just gonna sell you a course for $197. I'm gonna go in and do some live session for those people who have bought it and record them and put them in there and just keep gathering those evidence and examples of those particular strategies. It's good to learn. Ah, Thomas, right. Okay, I haven't started multi-charts up, so let me just bear with me because I don't use it very often. It's not one of the most popular um, platforms, so as you can imagine, I don't use it that often. So let me just fire it up. Okay, and while we're firing it up, I'll bring in the futures. Um, most people, multi charts users are outside of the US. And the reason why I chose multi charts is because think of swim you see here really can't be used outside of the US. Um, uh, you know, multi charts can be used anywhere in the world. So. <clears throat> Just very quickly, this is uh, my futures setup. 
they go, well, I'm working with my inner circle at the moment because we'll be, we'll be doing a wave five trade uh, future, future signal service by SMS. Uh, and these are the, the first six that we're going to launch within September. So this strategy, again, I teach it in a course um, and we are, well, there we go. Multicharts has just started up on its own there. Okay. So let me, let me do this for Thomas first guys, and then we'll go on to the, um, on to the, Futures. So now, again, I'm not an expert, Thomas, on multi charts. Okay. So oscillator retracement, this bit here, this is what you're struggling with to draw. Yeah. So let me remove drawing. And then I'm just going to um, show you how to do that when I can figure out where the drawing tool is. So bear with me. Not one of them. <laughs> um, bear with me, Trevor. Uh, <laughs> right, I've got to find the uh, tool first. That would help. I thought it was in there. But that's, oh, Fibonacci tools. There we, um, there we go. So we have don't want time you re, you. that's retracements isn't it let me just 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 check that out there yeah that's a retracement I need um, I need extensions. It's not that one, is it? Surely. So the 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 to measure, um, Thomas, and um, this is time. So this is going to be no good for, for, for us here. Uh, I need to find the fib extension tool, uh, and again, I don't use this very often. So you're going to have to bear with me because. I'm just looking for a fib extension and I can't find it anywhere. Right, I'm going to show you on a, oops. No, Fernando, uh, uh, version three is not on the, um, the store, uh, on the app store. It's only on the full paid lifetime version at the moment. There we go, found it, trend-based extensions. So when we're measuring the the oscillator retracement thomas it's the same on any of the platforms we go to the highest point on wave three which is up here okay we click once we then come down to the zero line of the oscillator click the second time then we take it back up to that highest point on the wave three and we click again okay now I've set that as a predetermined default, 19, 140%. But if you right click on there, you can format that extension and you can change the colors. Uh, you need to change it to 0 0.9 or 1.4 and don't have anything else in there, okay? Does that make sense, Thomas? So again, it was very difficult for me to find the tool because I don't use multi-charts very often. So I found it in insert drawing and then fib tools trend-based extension lines okay and i'll draw it again 
you go from the highest point in the wave three, click, zero, click, highest point in the wave three again, and click, and then you've got the 90 to 140. Okay, cool. So yes, uh, just to answer your question, Fernando, this is version three on TradeStation. It's only available on the lifetime license at the moment, uh, not available on the App Store because we're still a work, it, it, it works slightly different in the App Store, okay? Uh, and at the moment it's not available for the App Store and I don't know when it will be available. Um, but I, I, you know, hopefully by af after the summer we'll get that false bar stochastic in there as well. Okay, so going back to futures guys, somebody asked me um, on, on the email as well, um, and I'm gonna use NQ as an example here, how to set up the actual, pat, the, the chart for, for this, okay? So again, we, I, there's a lot of this in the training course, in the elite training course, but just the basics, just the basics, I'm going to go on to here. So I've got my daily high and low, my daily open, my pivot points, okay, and the open interest. So what do they look like? Oh, give it a time to just re redo everything. And this is pretty much the same. They're called slightly different things on each platform. But you're looking at the, you need the previous day's high and low, the close. You need today's pivots, which are auto-generated by the software platform that you are on. And they all pretty much use the same sort of algorithm. So the, R, the yellow line here is basically my, I use it as my center line. This is the close of yesterday. So if I just zoom out a little bit here, this is a five minute chart for NQ. This was the stock market close yesterday, this hatch line down here. And as you can see, the yellow line here is the close of yesterday. And that's my, my point of reference, if you like. Yes, you will, Fernando, absolutely. Email me at all at wave5trade.com and I will give you a discount for the month that you've paid and I'll just send you a PayPal invoice minus the month that you've already paid on TradeStation and then when you've paid that I'll send you the lifetime license for TradeStation. Okay, sound fair enough? And emails just in the chat there. Okay, so Let's go back to framing this. What we're doing is we're, we're framing the day. So when we wake up, we want the close of yesterday. We, uh, we want the high of yesterday, which is this green line. And we want the low of yesterday's session. We're not interested in anything else. We are interested in what that futures contract is doing today. Okay. We're also interested in these, these, these dotted lines are the pivot points, okay? So this is your, your main pivot point for the day, which the software um, produces. And then equidistant are your resistance levels, which are automated, and your support levels. So these are um, prices where decisions are most likely to be made, okay? If that makes sense. Now, when we're isolating this, it's very simple, okay? We don't go any further back than the previous 24 hours to look for a low. If we get a range bound period overnight, that's not a trend. We get the low just before the open, okay? Today on NQ. Oh, sorry, I've got the wrong, I need the hand, I need the hand. So then today, this is where we've come. Now we were in the trade room earlier. Didn't take this, uh, I was chatting with one of my inner circle guys. We didn't take this trade here. Okay, because that, that was a wave four pullback at the time. But 
535 wasn't backing us up. Stochastic didn't cross in the oversold zone. Then it went on to make that wave three, the proper wave three, which I call it. Now the, the, the 535 is pulling back. We've just gone red there. Stochastic's just entering the oversold zone. This is the sweet spot we're looking for now. So I don't want to go into it in too depth because it's part of the, um, the elite training course. Um, but just you need to frame your chart for the day. And to do that, re, I'm just going to remind you again. We need the previous day's close, okay? We need the previous day's high, previous day's low. Then we need the pivot points generated by the software. And this frames your, um, your chart for the day. And then you've just got to allow that high or low to happen. It could happen overnight during the European session, during the Asian session. Uh, or it could happen an hour or so before the market's open. And when we get some strong momentum like we have now, when it pulls back against it, we look for that trade. So somebody did ask me by email to go through how to set up the chart for that. Simple, five minute time frame and the things I've just discussed. Uh, anybody got any questions on that? It's just, it's just about framing your chart for the day. And you need to look at tradable futures. Um, ZB, we're doing quite well on the moment. Obviously, CL is pretty good. Uh, GC, NQ, and YM are the six we're looking at. I think we're going to probably, I don't know, Jerry, whether we have um, add the DAX as well to this. So we'll have to talk about that. But um, so that's that's futures on the five minute time frame. Um, but you, we are able, when in the elite training course, I do look at stochastic trades within this as well, because they are very strong. Is it, is it FDAX? Is it FDAX or not on TOS? No? We'll have to do some research on that to see if it's available. Okay, brilliant. Um, okay, so what I want to do now is I want to bring over the Ninja Trader version. And I want you to let me know what you want to look at, guys. Okay, can you look at AMD? Certainly, Trevor, yeah. You read my mind. Ooh, that's strong at the moment, isn't it? Wow, okay. We zoom out. Obvious low here, Trevor. Obvious low. I'm going to click on there. I'm going to press F5. Um, now, for me, that's not a wave four. <laughs> okay. Uh, the software's labeled it as such because it pulled back a certain percentage. But as soon as this current move goes above this wave three, everything will be reassigned, as it were. Uh, at the moment, we're in a really strong bullish move, okay? Uh, we, we've got to wait for that wave three to happen and the wave four to pull back. Um, and you would probably be looking at, I always like to look left here, so I would say, that sort of level there around about $14 once the wave three is complete and we go higher because that's going higher at the moment because again this is just a false wave four because look at the 535 look at the false breakout stochastic this is denoting a really strong bullish trend we don't want to be getting in on that because we just don't know when it's going to end yeah the whole idea of wave five trade is waiting for that to end, pull back into your wave four pullback zone, and then that's the high probability going back up again. Thirty minute and one hour. Let me have a look. It's out. No, I'm not going to do it for motive wave. Um, we 
we're looking at MT4 next and potentially other larger brokers in the US, not Motive Wave. It's a bit of a conflict where they really, because they have uh, different views and opinions on, on Elliott Wave, um, Fernando. Um, bear with me a minute, I just need to get the data series right here. We want to go back 120 days. Uh, am I getting problems with the data here? Um, I thought we would go back further than that, or did I just do 12 days by mistake? Aha, there we go. Yeah, when you get a um, one, two, three, you need at least seven bars to touch on the wave four. So yeah, there was an entry. I think I'd prefer the 60 minute on there, the 30 even. Tao, Tao was in uh, Chicago, so he will understand why um, from the court. But no, I like the 60 minute. That The, the trade's already gone though. We've, um, we've, we're beyond that now. So, you know, we, We've missed out on that one on the 60 minute. But again, with the elite training course, we talk about multiple time frame strategies with the daily, the weekly, the 60 minute and shorter time frames on how to keep going in to those um, particular stocks and what, what strategy to use to use those different time frames to you trade the fifth wave in a strong trending stock. You're already in it, Tal, good. Good entry. Your entry should have been around 15.27. Am I correct? With call options, yeah. Is your target 16.50 then? Is it an open option or have you got, is it going to run out? Just a call, right, okay. Two weeks expiration. Yeah, that's that's about right for a 60 minute, yeah. Especially in today's environment. And I know recently we've had an NVDA trade on the 240 uh, that hit pretty quick actually. Um, I can't do 240 on here, which is really annoying. Let me just put it in the data series here. 240. So this is the trade we did in the trade room, uh, guys, on the 240 uh, on MVDA hit target last week um, but it works exactly the same sort of way we went from the low got the wave one the wave two wave three wave four pull back find good support around about the amber zone we got a really great um, pullback on the 535 on the stochastic everything tuned up boom in target okay so works very very well um, even on a 240 try and frame for stocks there, it looks, you know, really good. And uh, GBP, AUD, you, Wolfram, yeah. Let's have a look at, let's do some Forex. In the daily. Well, I quite like that on the uh, 240 there. Okay, that's not deep enough for me, Wolfram. Um, remember, if we're going to go short on this, the stochastic's got to come in the overbought zone and the 535's got to pull back between 90 and 140. When these are like this, it looks like this is going to be a complex wave four. So at the moment, I think we're having a red day. But in reality, for us to trade this short, 
this has got to pull back deeper. Now, when we look left, we can see a really strong support resistance zone there. So you're going to look at that and you're going to draw that in. Okay, you're going to put that in there without a doubt. Okay, that is going to be around there. Okay, so I've taken in all of these opens and closes here and these highs. So this is a really strong price. Now, in reality, our 535 has got some work to do, and so has our stochastic. We've got a really strong bearish trend where we are now. We're coming down. We need a deeper pullback against it, and we need this stochastic to pull back against the false breakout dots here. So when that does do that, if it does, and we come into the overbought and the, stock and the 535 backs us up, we will find that... arrow line that we will find resistance in this sort of zone so 1790 dead yeah and then that will be the fifth wave move so that is definitely worth keeping an eye on this one for the short there um, but at the moment the, again when we're entering we're looking for a 6-4 moving average low entry there's no risk to reward there this has got to pull back deeper and then we've got a great trade down. That's what we're looking for there. Does that make sense, Wolfram? Yeah. It's a good spot on the daily. Uh, I used to trade Forex on the daily time frame. And for some people trading Forex, it is, um, it's not exciting. Um, but Elliott Wave, when you get these right on the daily time frame, these are big moves. These are really big moves. So does that make sense? We're not going to go too early on this one. We want to make sure that goes deeper into that price. Okay. Anybody else got any other Forex they want me to look at while we're, we're on Forex? I'll come back to that in a second. I'm just going to check on the futures. Yes, okay, so uh, don't like YM, NQ like, ES really like. So let's have a look. Let's go maximize sell. So I can see it already, but I'm going to draw it in anyway, just to remind everybody. I'm probably going to miss the entry, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to do this as teaching practice, really. Um, so remember, 535. Five thirty-five highest point in the wave three. Click zero. Click highest point in the wave three. Cl click. There's our five thirty-five stochastics pull back against the false breakout here. It's crossed over in the oversold zone. We're looking for a, a long trade. So we've got the stop loss just below the wave four there. Probably can go a bit higher. And the entry, remember, <clears throat> remember we talked about framing the chart. This is a pivot point generated by the system. We don't want to be going long before that, do we? We really don't. So we've got to think, okay, we've got to be outside the 6-4 moving average. It's not going to be this bar position. To be honest, I'd, I'd like it to come a bit deeper. I'd like it to come and test these highs here uh, because when we put in an entry at 2.79238 here, the risk reward is what we call in England a load of crap. Okay, so we measure that and we haven't got a decent risk to reward there. So. that click no we didn't so as you can see there we're only about one to one with that now what we have been doing when we've been trialing these is looking for anything for one to 1 1.4 or above um, with the with these particular strategies so it's not quite there yet the 535 is good uh, and we've got room for it to pull back further uh, and the stochastics crossed over, which is good. Or I would prefer 
this sort of level to be tested, where all these highs are here. So this doesn't matter whether it's a futures, a uh, five minute time frame, a Forex three minute scalpers time frame. When we got this wave four pullback, we would like to see it test a previous support or resistance level. And that's what we're looking at here. So let's draw that in there. Um, again, I'm not a TOS expert, but I'm looking here at this sort of level. So I'm taking in a lot of the opens and closes and the highs on them wicks. And that is my sweet spot. Okay. Again, we've got room on the 535 if it comes down lower. We've got no risk reward there at the moment. So we haven't got an entry. So we need, we need a deeper pullback, finding support and then going. Okay. <laughs> Usually the way forward come to an end, Trevor, um, at, at a previous support or resistance zone, but then it starts to move away. Now this could be a shallow way four. Once it breaks and closes above the six four moving average high, the likelihood is it's gonna continue. But in this case, there's not enough risk to reward for me. That's my last calculation. If there's not enough risk to reward, me personally, I just don't get in, okay? So yes, it looks like it could come further down. And you know, when I'm looking at all of these different uh, futures charts and stocks charts and things, and I've got all these screens around me and everything like that, I'm looking for the sweet ones, okay? Deeper pullbacks, which I mean by into um, it's great coming back into the green zone. We've got an 85% probability. Um, but uh, the actual target zone here is quite shallow because we've not come deep enough from the wave three. We've taken our time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Once we go over seven, okay, it almost becomes a flat wave four and a complex wave four and it ruins our risk reward. So we look for a deeper pullback into the amber zone or the red zone once we go over seven candles. Because the ideal situation is this pullback gets lower lows, lower highs, all the way down into that green zone. But th and then your uh, six four moving average will follow suit. What happened with this is we, we went flat for five candles. We then moved down and then we went flat for three candles. So our six four moving average stays quite shallow. Okay. We didn't get that sustained pullback that we needed. So a deeper pullback, I mean, it comes down deeper into our probability zones, but also we get that sustained pullback that this wasn't sustained. So we're, we're most likely to get a complex wave four now where we get this false move out. It comes down, we're on red at the moment, not, <clears throat> not got a crystal ball, don't know what it's going to do, but it will. We, what we're looking for once this happens and it's a bit rangy on its way down, we're looking for this deeper pullback to find a previous resistance in this case, a big resistance level there. Does that make sense, Trevor? All of these wicks here, big price there. I'd like it to come deeper and test there. Uh, could we go back to GBP AUD daily? Sure, let's do that now. Uh, let's pull that back. GBP AUD daily. Wolfram, you asked me to go back to it. Do you want me to do something else with it?
Okay. So yeah, I just came up to these highs here and the, we've got the ABC corrections and we're still, this is where we still are there. Okay, no problem. Okay, is there anything else, you know, whether it's a Forex, a stock, futures, something like that, different time frames. The idea of these sessions is for you guys, for, for you, you know, Wolfram's just asked me to look at this particular Forex pair. If you want me to look at another Forex pair, uh, something like that. Let's look at 6E, okay, 6E, Euro, US dollar. Um, let's pull it up on here. Let me just restore that cell. Okay, let's just get rid of oil for a minute and we'll go to 6E in the five minutes. And maximize that cell. Yeah, we'll do 6E and then we'll change it back to CL, Emil. Just bear with it. Needs to crank the data through. No problem, Tal. Thanks for turning up. Um, I will reply to your email later because there's, there's some more things I need to, to tell you. In a lot of cases, yes, Trevor. In a lot of cases. So 6E, five minute time frame, Jerry. Yeah. Oh, great move last night. Uh, just get bigger. Again, it's framed in the same way, guys. Okay, framed in the same way. Great fifth wave move during the Asian session there. Crappy during European session. <laughs> and then we've got a sell off into the close of the European session. So this here, this range bound period is not tradable at all. Um, but we have obviously, and that, to be honest, this, this wave falls too, too shallow as well. It's not deep enough here. But it's getting there. We just needed to come a little bit deeper up to, to test this sort of level, 1800. Uh, why I mean shallow is because there's no risk reward. Where would we enter? We've sensibly got to enter below this pivot. Stop loss is going to be above the way forward. There's no risk to reward there. So it's something specific, Jerry, you want me to, wanted me to look at. Those trading the Asian session had a fantastic move up fifth wave there. The entry was here, coming outside the 6-4 moving average high. 1.18004. So anything in particular, Jerry, you want to look at? For me, it's too shallow. There's no short there for me at the moment. Trevor, I'm going to swear now. Everybody, all the press are taking the piss out of Trump's uh, behavior at the G7. There's cartoons of him dressed in nappies at the table on his own with Angela Merkel pointing at him and telling him off and all that sort of thing. So yes, to be honest, there's, there's loads of comedy sketches and cartoons and uh, fun things being made out of it. Let's have a look at the hourly, Jerry. It's a bit rangy on the hourly, but we'll have a look. Basically, he's isolated himself, Trevor. <laughs> Uh, they'd let him out the bloody country. I said this earlier in the trade room. They shouldn't have let him out the country. Should have cancelled his visa. 
Right, I'm going to leave these on, guys, because um, 5.06, because I want to go back to CL on the five minutes. So I, you, you're going to have to pull up with those in a, uh, for a minute. 5.06, 5.06. This is the hourly on 6E. Yeah, we had, we missed the fifth wave move. That was a good. Um, we'll the data's got to catch up now. There we are. So yes, uh, this last past week on the hourly on 6E, this was a great way for pullback. Forget all those horizontal lines there for the five minute, but I just wanted to, uh, to zoom in and show you there um, and why that was a good trade. Okay, we had a big deep move, we went sideways, we have another deep move. So the entry was good just above this pivot point here. Risk reward about one to 1.6 into our target zone here. So that initial move wasn't deep enough. We went sideways, then we went back down again. We tested these previous support levels on this 60 minute, and then we moved higher and we went through the six four moving average high and that daily pivot point there. That was the entry that day. And then we're, we would have got out the following day there. So that's six E on the 60 minute looks pretty good. <laughs> Probably Jerry. Yeah. So let's just go back to CL on the five minutes for, sorry, I'm really bad with remembering names. Emil, sorry Emil. This just needs to catch up a minute. There we go. That's what it looked like on the three minute. I'm just wondering. So I've zoomed out quite a bit there, really. <coughs> this is where we are now. Still catching up the data. What's that pivot point? That's that low there. That is 3061. So let me just isolate that wave kind there. 3061. <laughs> Where are you based, Trevor? I've got an inner circle meeting in September, but I don't think there's enough people to warrant me putting on a wave five trade training day in September in Spain. I don't think there's too, uh, a lot of people based in Europe. Oh, New York, but you, you prepared to travel to Spain, but not to Chicago. <laughs> Uh, September's just it. I'm not doing a wave five trade in, in Spain in September. I'm just, it's just in a circle. They're all coming to Spain. So, um, so currently on CL, we've gone flat. Okay. We've had a little fifth wave move there, <clears throat> but we are flat right now. Let's just change that up a time frame or two. Let's go to 15 minute on CL. Sometimes we have to go up some time frames to um, get rid of those little ranges on the day trading. But again, I only like to be in and out of a futures trade in a, in a day. I don't like to carry these sort of trades over. Um, 
that's just me. Let's put that to zero and see what it says. So, Takes a while, crunching the numbers. The inner circle, Trevor, is $7,000 a year. Um, for that, you get a one-to-one -one mentoring session with me every month. We have weekly meetings. We've built a blend portfolio that we keep adding to that's beating, I would say, majority of funds, wouldn't you say, Jerry, Victor? Uh, who else is in here? Gary. Um, I don't think Mark's in here. Um, and then we have other trades as well. Uh, trades like Cuz at the moment. So with oil, there's no trades there at the moment. Uh, email, there's no trades there at all. Um, we have two get-togethers a year. We just did one in Chicago. We've got another one in September in Spain. And then next year, we're just doing one at the moment, and that will be in Montreal, Mont Montreal, as they say over there. And that will tie in the Canadian Grand Prix as well. So that will be pretty cool. Um, we've got um, a special app called Mango Apps, which has all the different strategies and trades that I'm putting out because the inner circle get everything that I do. They are basically following a money manager, um, but I'm also teaching them as well. Um, so got a nice bullish flag on the 15 minute on the CL guys. If you like breakouts, uh, anything above 66.36 would be a good breakout there. Thomas on futures, no. Uh, don't look on higher time frames for um, for futures trading on the daily time frame, and I'll tell you why. It's news driven for a start, but also we're only interested in the current trend. Where we are right now today, we need that low. We're looking. We're day trading futures. We're just looking for that pullback against the main move, whether that's long or short. Okay. And again, in the elite training course, it's not just the fifth wave moves, it's the stochastic moves as well. So YM, for example, earlier today was a big stochastic move. If I just, okay, so we got the, the, the green just on the wave two there. The stochastic move, one of the strategies that I discuss in the lessons and teaching the lessons in the elite training course is trading the third wave. Green arrow here, Today, it's just underneath the wave two there, the other green arrow. That was the move. That was the stochastic move there today on YM. That's a good move, Trevor. I, I like uh, AMD. It was a good move. So, yeah, back, Trevor, um, what was it? Yeah, so Trevor, just very briefly, uh, you get in trades like with the inner circle, like this, okay? So this is a fifth wave move on a weekly time frame. We do a lot of those. So we're blending in those with the daily time frame. This is because it's just about at target now. Um, so you get those, and then we've got a blend of around 24 stocks and ETFs. Uh, and we use a special that blend investing strategy and I guide everybody through we're on a chat constantly um, on um, mango apps it's on our phones it's on our desktops people basically have access to me all the time in the inner circle and we have our projects in there so whether it's short term swings US equity blend Inner circle ideas, swing trades, algo signals, funds, bonds, ETS, trend reversals, blah, blah, blah. It's all in there. Okay. Uh, and to be honest, there's six people in the inner circle now. There will only ever be 10. Have no more because I won't have enough time because they get a lot of my time. Um, and it's about building a core nucleus of serious traders and investors. Uh, so, and, and again, these are all the chats, 
you know, individual or group chats. I've got it on my mobile phone as well. Uh, and it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Anyway, that's the inner circle. If you're interested, give me an email, but I have got two other people. It, it, I think by the end of the year, we'll have the tent and we, we, it will be closed. So, <laughs> yeah, you don't get my calls, no. <laughs> oh dear. Let's just pull. All right, I'm just about ready to finish, guys. An hour and 15 minutes. Is there anything else anybody wants me to look at? As far, you know, whether it's futures, Forex or stocks. Uh, we've gone through quite a lot today. Um, you know, we've looked, uh, you know, we've really gone into some of the things, the 535s, uh, some of the uh, basics of setting things up, isolating, that sort of thing. And that's what it's all about. These monthly sessions are there for you to, to ask me questions and to get to understand and learn the, the indicator screen more. Is a great strategy. You've got to keep it simple though. Uh, and hopefully guys, you will take advantage of that elite training course. Um, it's $197, but you know, those five lessons are in there already, but then there will be five times 60 minute uh, videos that you will be able to attend live while I'm recording. And then it will just keep evolving. <laughs> I tell you that my the youngest children um, Trevor are adopted so um, they had poor health before they came to us and they still uh, they catch colds like you wouldn't believe and, sh and spread them but uh, anyway uh, I do get I do get them off of occasionally so I'm just going to stop the recording now okay